a soaring stock price, brand new analyst coverage, and a whole lot of news. In this video, we'll update you on everything you need to know about AST Space Mobile. Before we get into the latest news, let's review how ASTS stock traded in June for what turned out to be a pretty remarkable month. The stock opened the month at $22.98, making lows of $22.72 that same day. This low was followed by an incredible run which saw AST Space Mobile stock close green in 16 of the 20 trading days in June. The stock made highs of $54.05 on the 24th of June, the highest ASTS has ever traded. The stock closed the month on $46.73, gaining over $23 during the month of June, meaning it more than doubled. Now let's review the latest price targets. During June, several new analysts initiated coverage of AST Space Mobile. There was no update from Deutsche Bank in June, so its price target remains the same. Scotiabank meanwhile downgraded its outlook on ASTS from a sector outperform to a sector perform, as the stock hit its price target of $45.40. B. Riley increased its price target from $36 per share to $44. Cantor haven't issued an update since the 6th of February, so their price target remains the same at $30 per share. Roth Capital Partners remains at $42 per share. We've got two new targets to add to our chart this month, with Zach's Research setting a price target of $48 per share, and Bank of America, who have initiated coverage for the stock at a price target of $55. Vodafone is one of AST's most important partners. Back in December 2024, AST signed a definitive agreement with Vodafone that stretches through to 2034. One month later, the brand demonstrated the capabilities of AST's Block 1 Bluebirds by holding the first satellite-to-device real-time video call. This call was held in the UK, which is where Vodafone has just merged with the mobile network 3. Before this merger, the UK had four independent mobile networks run by EE, O2, Vodafone and 3, with all other operators using one of these four networks. Going forwards, there are now just three networks, with the Vodafone 3 network the largest of these, with a total of 27 million customers. The 10 million plus customers joining from 3 will all soon be able to benefit from AST's technology for seamless connectivity, wherever they are in the UK. Sticking with Vodafone, in June VI, also known as Vodafone Idea, announced that it would be joining AST Space Mobile as an MNO partner. VI has over 210 million subscribers across India. The Vodafone Group is a major shareholder in VI, along with the Indian government and several other parties. VI has been under financial strain for some time, so it's hoped that offering satellite-to-device broadband services could be one of the things to help turn the company around. In our final piece of Vodafone-related news this month, Satco, the joint venture launched in March this year between AST Space Mobile and Vodafone, has announced its headquarters will be based in Luxembourg. In an article covering the announcement, Vodafone shared that MNOs from 21 EU member states had expressed interest in its direct-to-device satellite broadband offering. Vodafone expects Satco's commercial service will begin sometime next year. Interestingly, Blue Origin, another partner and key launch provider for AST Space Mobile, also recently announced that it too had chosen Luxembourg for the home of its European base. Maybe Blue Origin will be working closely with Satco, or this could just be a coincidence. In June, AST Space Mobile held its annual general meeting. At the end of the event, Andrew Johnson, who is AST's Chief Financial Officer and Chief Legal Officer, answered several questions from investors. These questions covered AST's future government business, launch updates and information on the company's current and projected financial position. You can listen to the full question and answer session with upscaled audio over on our YouTube channel. 
The 5G Automotive Association, also known as the 5G AA, welcomed AST Space Mobile as a member in June. The 5G AA is a global organization focused on bringing together parties from the automotive, technology and telecommunications industries to develop transportation solutions for the future of mobility. Adding AST's tech will help to revolutionize connectivity across the automotive industry, something that could be very important to support the future of connected autonomous driving. This month we got confirmation that ASTS will move from its current position as a member of the Russell 2000 Index up into the Russell 1000 Index. The Russell 1000 Index tracks the performance of the 1000 largest publicly traded companies in the United States, making it a key stock market benchmark. The move took place after the market closed on Friday the 27th of June. AST has now completed development of its AST5000 ASIC chip. This chip is a step change from the company's current FPGA chip and is part of the technology needed to support 100 megabits per second data speeds, enabling 10,000 megahertz of processing bandwidth per satellite. When answering investor questions at AST's AGM, Andrew Johnson said that the chip would be available for satellite integration during June 2025, meaning ASIC chips might be going to space sooner than expected. During June, investors also got confirmation that AST had reached a settlement regarding the Legado Spectrum. AST now has long-term usage rights to 40 MHz of premium lower mid-band spectrum in Canada and 45 MHz of premium lower mid-band spectrum in the United States. This spectrum will be crucial for high-speed data rates and positions AST well against potential rivals such as Starlink, Globalstar and Link, all of whom will not have access to these bands of spectrum. In June, AST submitted an application to the FCC for its full constellation of 248 satellites. The application now sits with the FCC to review, so we'll be eagerly awaiting any updates on this during July. Approval of this request would be a significant regulatory milestone for AST Space Mobile's mission to connect the unconnected. We've also got the launch of FM1, the first Block 2 Bluebird with the ISRO. This launch was initially planned for earlier in the year, but has been moved back to a July-August timeframe. It seems likely that during July we'll get an update from the company on when this satellite will be launched. What are you most looking forward to in July? Let us know in the comments, and if you're not already, please subscribe to Connected Space.